this sums up the week you're having. Hey, up here, let's in shambles. Hey, up here, I'm Edwina. I'm Hannah. And we are okay, okay Paris. Is that what we usually say? No. <laughs> Today we thought we would do a nice and easy video. We did a live stream on Instagram yesterday. Just super fun. <laughs> We realized that we have a lot of questions that we receive on Instagram, so we figured we'd do a Q&A, mm -hmm. like these other YouTubers out there, and answer your questions on YouTube, so on Instagram. Alright, first question is from Florina Maya. She gave us a little bit of a situation where she's like just having trouble with her host family. I think we saw this a lot on the Instagram live feed yesterday where a lot of people are just starting to arrive and meet their host families, and we get a lot of messages, especially at this time, about specific situations that you're in, especially now people are first arriving with their host families and trying to understand the dynamic and yep. to be honest, the dynamic of being an au pair is just really weird and it never, it doesn't never get better, but it's just kind of wow, weird well, the whole old. time. <laughs> it's just weird the whole time. So I think like the big question is what, what happens if me, it's been two weeks, let's say, and me and my host mom and my host dad aren't really getting along. I think first you have to assess what you mean by getting along. Like if you're fighting all the time or they're pushing your boundaries or they're taking advantage of you, then you should consider leaving. Mm -hmm. But if you just simply don't feel that comfortable around them or you feel a bit awkward or you don't really enjoy spending time around them or you feel homesick, those are two kind of different categories. Mm -hmm. And if it's the latter, then you should... I would say stick it out, do what's comfortable for you, like try and get out of the house as much as possible, avoid being like around them more than necessary, but when you are around them, try and just ease into it and realize that it'll be awkward for a while because you're living yeah. with someone else's family, but just like slowly acclimatize. Yeah, it's difficult. I think that you can often feel like you're being taken advantage of mm -hmm. and it's just something that, it's so situation-based and it's so like, you have options. If you really feel like it's something that you can't tolerate anymore, you have the option to go home and just leave, which is fine if that's what you feel like you need to do. Or you can tough it out and try to find a new family and see if that works for you. A piece of advice which you've given before is just try and like not feel awkward if that's the problem. Like for instance, Fake just go and, make yeah, go and like sit in the living room with your host family and read a book on your off right. time. Or like try, because the line is so blurred and your host family need to learn that you are also, you know, now part of this family, mm -hmm. kind of. That you need to just kind of push your way in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it can feel awkward and weird, but as soon as you meet new au pairs, in wherever you are, mm -hmm. they will basically help you out with realizing that this is normal. Yeah, getting a life and working on your life outside of au pairing helps you toughen through the experience of au pairing because mm -hmm. It gives you people to talk to yeah. about the weirdness that you're going through, which is why it's so nice to have other friends who are au pairs because you're both going through, or you're all going through this weird thing at the same time. This is a question about our Facebook page. We have Facebook pages for our APOP members, and we've been starting events for au pairs in Paris. And a lot of us, a lot of au pairs, are asking us what question, what um, events we're, we are hosting for those of you who are outside of Paris. And to that, I would say we're getting there, we're growing. Right now, we have to focus on au pairs in Paris just because we want to start small before expanding ourselves too widely. But you can always become an APOP ambassador and try to start your events and your own pages through us. Um, and we'll help you out with that. You can contact us through our Facebook page. But yeah, or all in website. all, or our website. But all in all, we are growing. Our Facebook page is slowly but surely growing. And we just had our first event um, on Saturday. September 8th, depending on when I edit this. <laughs> and uh, it went really well, so please get on the Facebook pages. And yeah. Generally, do host parents care about race, sexuality, gender identification? I know everybody is different, but is this is that usually something they would consider before hiring? And we've gotten this question before. Super interesting question. I've never even thought of this. Mm. You go. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, that's three simple questions, isn't it? Because if your host family care about your race, then it's kind of like, like that's something that you can't hide, really. Whereas if it's your sexuality, I don't think you should hide it, but I would not be inclined to tell my host parents about what I was, like, my own personal life. Yeah. Who knows, basically? It depends entirely on your host parents. You can never, you can never know. Mm-hmm. Like we had a couple of au pairs who would contact us and say, I'm in a really weird situation because my host family are racist, but they're not racist towards me. 
and then we had like a couple of situations where people were gay and didn't know whether to tell their host parents yeah. and it always just depends on the people doesn't it which is a really annoying yeah. answer but it it depends on two two things I think like what di what dynamic you want with your yeah. host family do you want them to be part of your family and you won't really know that until you get there and feel it out and you're like ah these people you know kind of want more like working flow here mm -hmm. or I want them to be my family I would say like wait to feel it out yeah. before you it's with the sexuality thing especially mm -hmm. um, and it'll just come organically in conversation hopefully if you do end up like telling them it's not something that needs to be forced but. When we were discussing this, you were very much of the mentality of like, they're your boss. You don't need to tell them anything. Like, if you don't want if to. If it's not related to yeah. the job at hand, like mm -hmm. you don't have to tell them anything you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Whereas at first I was kind of like, they're your family. You should definitely tell them. They should be able to accept you for, you know, who you are. Mm -hmm. And I obviously, that's not, I mean, I've never heard of a host family just like, not wanting it no pair because they were no. of their sexuality. Yeah, but, I've never you know. heard of anything yeah. like that question, but so that's obviously you don't know what goes on behind closed doors right. and how au pairs are being treated, but I've never heard anyone being like discriminated against for their race, sexuality or gender yeah. identification. So, so I would say wood. feel it out. Feel <laughs> it out before you get there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing I will say about the race thing is my very first host family had a Filipino nanny for years and years and years, mm -hmm. and they were like, oh, you're Filipino and it's like I am Filipino but I'm American like I don't really I'm not I wasn't raised in the Philippines or anything and they like took a liking to me because I was, because I was Filipino and they're like oh Filipino people are so kind I'm <laughs> like, like yeah, I am. hire me <laughs> we're not experts on this though obviously yeah, like we'd obviously love to hear not. your um, experiences and whether any of you have been treated badly mm -hmm. because of your race, race or sexual yeah definitely put in the comments sexuality. below if you've experienced anything like that it's yeah. terrible what's the next step y'all i think you mentioned you were finished repairing so now what <laughs> what a like, question who knows we I talk mean, about this every day we're at yeah. that age where it's like we don't freaking know mm -hmm. uh so i mean right now i am going to be a teacher in france and working and we're both we're always working on au pair of paris so that's something that's going to be continuous for like a long while hopefully until we yeah. get really tired of it but we love helping y'all mm -hmm. out and so that gives us a lot of value i think but outside of I'm that gonna be a teacher i mean teacher more kids yay yeah. children <laughs> yeah i've been um a freelance journalist since i was an au pair so i'm going to continue doing that and i'm pretty mm -hmm. happy not knowing what the future holds to be honest Hannah's really good at just living in the present. Yeah. Me, not so, me, not so <laughs> much. Only because I don't feel the pressure because I have like, I'm like, yeah, this is my career now. Get off my back. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> but we will continue traveling together, doing videos, make doing au pair of Paris, and being friends. Catch one, potentially. <laughs> good question. How to deal with discipline and temper tantrums. How do you deal with discipline and temper tantrums? Again, it totally depends on the child, but my second host kid used to have really bad temper tantrums when I first arrived. And I realized it would always be because he was hungry. So I would start feeding him more. <laughs> it was like a different child. So I think finding the root source of like the problem, like what that is and trying to deal with that to prevent the temper tantrums but then during a temper tantrum I don't know I would just have to write it out like speak to your host family and ask them how they would deal with the temper tantrum but one of my host kids would always like scream and cry and physically hurt me before um, she had a bath and that was like a situation that I have no idea how I would have dealt with that better because I tried to approach the parents for help and they didn't really offer much help and I tried to like bribe her and all sorts of things but so what did you do? Um, I just dealt with it actually this was probably a good one to cut out <laughs> you just dealt with it? I had to because she would always have a tantrum and you just had to deal day. with it yeah. I think that's good information. I used to have five rules that I made the home screen on my phone. And if someone broke one of those rules, then I knew that there would be consequences. But if it wasn't, if it was kind of in the gray area, then I knew I could kind of treat it as maybe not consequences today, maybe consequences. But like having five things that I knew to handle made my life easier. When tantrums happened, I, first of all, would default to what my parents, my host parents did. Mm -hmm. And so my 
second host family was really good in that like whenever they came home from work they would ask me how the kids were and then if there was a tantrum that day I would say oh blah 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 through a tantrum because of this stupid thing that happened. Once I told them what had happened they would discipline the kid accordingly so seeing the parents discipline the kid based on what I said reinforced my power over the kids even though that sounds kind of like scary <laughs> but the kids respected me more because the parents respected what I told them mm -hmm. had happened um, so yeah if it was a really bad tantrum I would default to the parents and hope that they did something because the more and more your parents support you the less and less there will be tantrums because That's the true. kids know that you are an actual role person to be respected in that mm -hmm. household. That's all for now. Thank you for asking your questions. We wanted to keep this video short. We will be doing more live streams as we are now together. And so keep an eye out on those. And, and check out Edwina's vlog channel if you want to see what we're up to in Norway. And we're how today. And how we are traveling across the country on a budget. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye. God, we've been filming this so long. It's so weird. Hey, Paris. I'm a ghost. I'm so pale. Look at this. <laughs> Change the settings. I literally can't just video. Oh, God. Maybe I should go put loads of bronze on. <laughs>